In this video, I'm going to talk about using Plex, that's P-L-E-X, Plex, specifically Plex Server, in order to set up your own personal Netflix, your own personal streaming service. In order to do this, there are two things you're going to want to do right away. You're going to want to download Plex Media Server, and you're going to want to set up an account with Plex. In order to download the server, you'll go to their website, Plex.tv. You will click on Downloads, as you see here, and right up at the top, it says Plex Media Server. If you're downloading it for a NAS, then you probably don't need to be watching this video. But if you're downloading it for a computer, then you'll click here and you can download it for Windows, for Mac, for Linux, even for the free BSD OS. Towards the end of the video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Plex Home Theater. That's a client. It's not a server. It's not bad. Many people use it and they love it. There's another one I prefer more as a standalone client, and I'm going to be covering that in the next video. But in the interests of being balanced and showing you all options, I will, towards the end of this video, talk about Plex Home Theater. But the main focus is going to be on Plex Server so that you can stream videos across your home network or across the internet to any smart connected device. When you download Plex Server and you install it, if you check your running applications, this is Windows 8, so you can't see it here, but I'm clicking on the tiny up arrow next to the clock in the taskbar. You can see right here, Plex Media Server is running. You don't interact with this directly. Rather, you go to Plex TV, you log in, you sign in, and your account will come up. Here's the example. This is my account. I've already logged in. But when you log in for the first time, you should still see these categories on the left-hand side. Mainly, movies, music, and TV shows. That's what we would like to concentrate on. If you have named your folders properly, as we did in the previous video, what you'll want to do is, first for movies, if you click on this little pencil icon right here and then click on folders, you can specify where your videos are stored. In my case, some movies are on the E drive in the videos folder and other movies are in the F drive in the videos backslash movies folder. And if you want to add another one, it's very easy. You click add folder and you can add whatever folder it is. You'll then want to do it for music. You can see in my case, I actually have my music on the C drive in the music folder, which is the default. TV shows, those, at least in my case, are kept in the TV shows folder in the videos folder on the F drive. By doing this, by setting the specific drives and folders for each of the different types of content, the program will know what to look for. Once you've specified all of that, then what you need to do is click on this down arrow right here, as you can see next to the gear, and say Update Libraries. It will then update your movies, music, and TV libraries. I haven't found a successful way to update only one library at a time, so we're just going to do the whole thing. But while we're doing that, while it's updating, if you watch across the bottom of the screen here, you will see that it's going through the scanning process, and in the last video, we ripped an American Werewolf in London, if you'll remember. And you will see that eventually it says, Downloading Metadata for an American Werewolf in London. It will see that because it's in the properly named folder, and it will download all of the data it needs right then. So here we go. Update Libraries. You can see here, we have the spinning icon next to Movies, and down here, it's telling us the status. There it found an American Werewolf in London. It downloaded the metadata for it. You know, the, uh, the movie poster and the writer and the director and all of that information. I really don't need it to scan my music folder. It's doing it anyway. It never gets it quite right, might I add. If you have some local artist, it won't know who that is. If you have some very obscure 
recording artist. It may not know who that is, but it does it anyway. And same for TV shows. Now it says library scan complete. If we refresh the page, there's an American Werewolf in London. It found it. It downloaded the data. You can see there's the poster there. I did not add that. It downloaded it automatically. And if we click up here, not on the play button, not on the edit button, but if we click up here in the picture, it has downloaded all of this information for us. Now we know who the director is, the writer, the cast. It's 1080p, it's 5.1, it's DTS. It did all of that all on its own. Now, you can hit play and the movie will play. These arrows, by the way, these arrows will make it full screen. So let's go back. We'll click on home. That's really all there is to setting up your library for watching on the same machine that's hosting the files. But what if you want to stream the video? That's a little more difficult. It's not terrible, but there are some steps involved. In that case, what we need to do is come over here to Settings. Click on Settings. Click on Server. I always click Show Advanced. And then Connect. You see here, it says Manually Specify Port 32400. The reason we do this is because normally, in order to watch the videos you have wherever you are in the world, whether it's, a, it, it's in another country, another state, whether it's another device in your own house, if you put in your credentials, your username and your password, it may connect on its own and you'll be able to see your videos. But if it doesn't, if there's some problem, then you can manually specify the port. And the number you want to use is 32400. In other words, you have to do what's known as port forwarding. Now this gets into networking a little bit. It's not terribly difficult. I'm going to show you how to do it. But just keep in mind that if it doesn't automatically connect, you may have to do this from the settings menu, the server menu specifically. How do you set this port? I have brought up my own router access web page, and I did this by typing in this IP address. If you have a Linksys Cisco router, this is the address you're going to want to type in, 192.168.11. Your IP address is always going to begin with 192 or with 10. Your router may be different. For mine, and it's a Linksys router, it's a very common type of router, it's a common type of interface, I type in my username, and I type in my password, and it takes me to this screen. This is my router's interface. Over here, if I click on Applications and Gaming, you can see that I have typed in Plex. I have typed in 32400, just like we have specified over here. 32400 as the external port and as the internal port. You want to use both the TCP and the UDP protocols, and you want to send it to whatever the IP address is of that particular device. In this case, my device is 192.168.1.121, and I have it enabled. But how do you find this out? How do you determine this number? It's actually not as difficult as you might think. You can do it one of two ways. First, you can do it by using the control panel. You can get to that from the Start menu. I'm in Windows 8, so I have to bring this guy up here. You can see it says Settings, and then I click on Control Panel, and this comes up. Now, your Control Panel may be in Category View. My advice, switch to Large Icons, because it gives you a much more nuanced listing of everything you can do. Click down on Network and Sharing Center, right here, and then this window will come up. And if you look right here, it says Connection Ethernet. Click on that, then click on the Details button here, and there's your IP address, 192.168.1.121, just like I had typed in in the box in the router web page. 
Another way you can do it, if you're interested, for those of you who are uh, more inclined to do things like this, if you go to this screen and type in CMD, or you can type it into the search bar in Windows 7, Windows Vista, that will bring up the command prompt. Hit enter, and there you go. Here, you can type IP, C-O-N-F-I-G, IP config, hit enter, and there's your IP address, 192.168.1.121, just like I had typed in right here. Regardless of how you do it, it's going to give you the same result. Once you've done that, you've made Plex forward, let's move this out of the way, both the external port and the internal port using both TCP and UDP to your PC's address and then enable it, then you should be set for at least viewing on your home network that you have to save the settings. We come back here, we specified the port, and we can update that, and it should be good to go. Now, if you have a different type of router, you click on this link, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. It has this page. This page is really good. Let's say, for example, you have a Netgear router. You can click on N, then click on Netgear, then click on the particular model of Netgear router you have, and it will walk you through the whole process with screenshots and everything. The way that I've showed you how to do it is pretty general. All router interfaces will have a means for doing this port forwarding, and you would want to set that up. Once you've done that, by going to, by going to uh, Plex.tv in a browser, or by logging into your account from an app on a smart device, it should automatically connect to your library, and that's all that it takes. Then, when you're at the startup screen, it'll show you all the stuff you've watched recently, everything you've added recently, and if you just click on movies, it'll show you all your movies. I especially like this, where you can jump right to a particular letter. If we go back home, music is the same way. Go back home, television shows are the same way, and it will also divide them up by season. So find a season you're interested in, click on that, it will show you all of the episodes that you have. Now let me talk a little bit about the client. If you're going to be watching these using a web browser or using the Plex app, and incidentally the Plex app is available on many platforms, Xbox, Roku, uh, Amazon devices, on iOS, on Android, on Windows devices, it's just available on everything. But if you're going to use the client, then this is what it'll look like. And again, I prefer a different client, but many people use it and many people love it. So let me show you what it looks like. This is the Plex client. It's not a server, it's the client. There are several reasons that I don't use this one. Not that it's terrible, it just isn't as great as it could be. First of all, there's no mouse support. You have to use a remote or you have to use, in my case, I'm actually going to be using an Xbox 360 controller. If you listen, if you heard that noise, that's my 360 controller connecting to my PC. And it does that through a Microsoft PC Xbox 360 controller adapter. It's a wireless adapter that I had to buy from Amazon. I've never seen one in the stores, but you can do that. Now, if I use the control pad, I can scroll through all of these things. So if we go to movies and we hit the A button, here's all the movies that I have. And you can pick one and watch it. If we go back, it's the same with music.
and it's the same with TV shows. And of course, it will show you all the seasons that you have. Sadly, Futurama was only on for seven seasons. It seems like it's really great. What else do you need? In my particular case, and again, this is just me. This is my own, my own taste, my own issue. It's very, very difficult to change these background images. And in the next video, you'll see what I mean. You'll see why I think anyway it makes a difference. But setting up very simple things can be difficult. If we go into movies and we pick a movie, we get this page first. We can set some things up, but setting up subtitles, right? Not all of these will show up while the movie is playing. I just think it's difficult to control overall. It's functional. It's just not terribly pretty. And there are some issues with controlling it that I just can't get my mind around. Again, not that it's bad. If you, if you tap left on the control pad, then you get into things like preferences. I thought that perhaps it would be better if I tried a different skin. So I switched over to this one. This one looks pretty nice, but again, I can't control the images in the background. And I don't know why, but that just bugs me. Even if I go to settings, you can see it says customize. I click on that and it says customize your backdrops and I go over here. But movies, television shows, music aren't listed. I can't control anything. If I go to music, there are no options. It just comes up with a blank screen. Apparently from what I've learned, it used to be that you would manage your backgrounds and what have you through the web interface, but the web interface no longer allows for that. So while I don't think that Plex is a bad client, I just don't think that it's the best client. Also, this shut down, you have to be very careful. That won't ask for a confirmation and it will shut down your entire system, your entire PC. So we'll go back here. We'll go to customize. We will go to advanced. There are so many things you can do, jeez. Let me see here. I honestly don't remember how to switch it back to the, to the skin that we had. Oh, here we go. So I'll switch it back to the stock skin. We'll go back to the home, left, and we will say quit. Remember, if you say shut down, it's gonna turn off your entire device. Quit. Oh, and an appropriate picture to end on. So that's how the client works. In my opinion, Plex is absolutely astounding as a server. It works brilliantly. It works perfectly. I have never had a problem with it. I did have one slight problem of access when I was outside my home network, but it was easy enough to fix. If that becomes a problem with people who are trying to use this video to set up Plex server and stream outside their home network, then I can come up with another video that will talk about how to get around that, how to find out how you can fix that. If you're gonna be watching it through a web browser or through one of the dedicated apps, you shouldn't have any problem. It works very well, and there's really not a lot to setting it up. So good luck with that. If you have any questions or any problems, if something doesn't work, if I didn't cover something you'd like to know more about, you're welcome to ask me in comments or via email or in person, and I will be happy to answer it. Have fun, and I will see you in the next video.